What's going on guys? Today I'm going to do a walk around of my 1981 Pontiac Grand Prix. I've got this car featured in a lot of videos, stuff I've been doing to it, but I've never actually shown you guys the Grand Prix. So, I've had this car for 11 years now. It's been in the family for a long time. Of course, when I got it, I, you know, built it, did the paint, you name it, whatever. It was just a stock Grand Prix with one of the uh, 5.7 diesel motors in it, if anybody remembers those. So, basically, in a quick rundown, car was completely stripped of paint, painted black. I was going for, you know, a Grand National vibe, I guess. And it does have C3 Corvette wheels on it. I do want to get the black GNX wheels one day. Maybe. I don't really want to spend that money. But anyway, this got the C3 wheels on it. And let's see if I can do this without my tag being in there. So there's the back of it. Really good paint job. I can't remember who I had paint it, but it's been eight years since it's had paint and it looks fantastic. Maybe a couple of dingers here or there that I missed on the bodywork, but you can't really tell. And you can see where the cats decide they're gonna jump up on it because I have her in this poor little garage with no door out back because the Volkswagens just take up all the space in the main garage. But it's got a custom shaker hood on it because when I built the Olds 350 in there and put the high-rise intake you know it was too tall for the hood so you know and this is a Grand Prix so unfortunately there's like no aftermarket support for this car especially body kits because nobody really builds Grand Prix they build cutlasses you know Regals Monte Carlos not Grand Prix so what we had to do was get a shaker hood from a 70s Trans Am, 70s to 80s Trans Am, I believe it was. And then just, you know, just do the math and then make our cut in the OEM hood. And I ended up painting the OEM hood matte black just because at the time I thought it would be cool to offset the gloss shaker matching the gloss body, which I still think it does. Um, new carpet, it's got Pontiac Grand Prix LJ bucket seats, and to this day, I still have seat covers on the front and the rear. You know, one day I'm going to get them covered, but it's not important to me, so I never have done it. Painted up the bottom door trim. The upper is still original, just like I said, I, I never worried about it. New carpet, new headliner. The center console is from the LJ as well. If you remember, the LJ had the shifter in the center. <clears throat> and originally mine had it on the column. So, you know, I, I took the center out of the LJ. That was my parts car with the bucket seats. Made a custom, you know, insert just to hide the guts of it. And then now I have my B&M shifter on it. This car has a 204R transmission in it, stage two, with a manual valve body and the B&M pistol grip shifter. So it's got four gears. It's a four speed with the shifter. And I did a battery disconnect on it. So here's my battery switch, just so I don't have to pop the hood. It does have a parasitic drain. I have no idea where it's coming from. This right here, is your torque converter um, lockout switch just to disengage the lockout function of the torque converter on the 204R when I'm not on the interstate. Because I, for some reason it would just lock up in third, it kept wanting to lock up in third gear. So I bypassed the circuitry, put it, you know, put that switch in line. So now when I'm cruising on the interstate, I can just turn on the torque converter, you know, and it'll go into its overdrive. <laughs> Um, but other than that, the dash on it was never cracked. None of the glass was ever cracked. Just a nice, pristine, you know, for its age car. And my dad ended up giving it to me. 
So I had no choice but to play with this, you know. And my dad was into G-Body Regal, so he was going to do a Grand National clone, and he gave me this car. and So I rolled with it, and I don't regret it. It's put a lot of money into it, you know, and it's still a 1981 Pontiac Grand Prix. So to most people, it's not worth more than, I don't know, 5K, you know, but I have like 15K in it. And the car was free. And that's mostly my fault. I've gone through three motors. I've gone through three transmissions. All this just not blowing them up. I blew up one of the motors, but the transmission wise, I was I just couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted. You know, and I and I originally when I was going for my number three, I wanted to get a manual transmission, but you know, I decided to do the manual valve body instead because I just thought it was a lot cooler you know, quicker shifting. It's, it's rough on the drivetrain. Don't get me wrong, but you know, I have stage two and then I have a Yukon rear end, so it should be able to handle it just fine. But let's see if she'll crank. Oh, we got to turn the battery on. Sounds unhappy. Still have some tuning to do on it. But there she is in all her glory. What I believe to be a 72 Olds 350 block. I can't remember now. It's been so long. But regardless, it doesn't matter the year of the block because it's got the Edelbrock 7111 intake. It's got the number six heads. They were port and polish. And then 207 intake valves on the head. So I had a, you know, I had a machinist do that. It's got the shorty headers on it, true, true dual exhausts. Uh, new crank, new pistons, new flat top pistons. So, and, and it's got 10 and a half to one compression ratio. So I have to use premium fuel. And because of that, I, I've had this pinging issue. Now I've had it, I've had this engine built now for two years, right? So you'd think I would have had it perfect by now, but I still don't because I'm an idiot and I have not yet bought a harmonic balancer with timing marks to time it. So I have to do it by ear and I'll literally drive down the road. If I hear it pinging, I'll retard it like a degree. So I got it pretty good now where it's not gonna do any damage to the motor, but you know, I still need to do it the right way, and that's next on the list. Due to COVID season, it's been sitting for seven months. So, of course, when I cranked it up, the uh, intake was leaking oil all up here. It was leaking radiator fluid from the neck seal. I had a Holley 750 carburetor on it, which was also just pissing fuel everywhere because it had been sitting for seven months inside that dungeon. So, here... Within the last two weeks, what I did was I put a new intake gasket on it, all new gaskets on the top end. I installed a quick fuel Holly 600 carburetor because that's what my brother has on the 69 Corvette and it's got about the same build specs as this motor and it runs great. So I put a quick fuel 600 Holly on it. Runs great, I love it. I think it's got a little more pickup because there's not as many CFMs being lost I guess I mean I, I I don't think the motor really was big enough to handle a 750 to its full potential so I stepped it down to a 600 and it seems to handle fine here's that Trans Am shaker hood that I was telling you about it's got a new seal on it and it's not a filter now. but yeah just a just a fun car no complaints with it a lot of money dumped into this thing you know like i said i wish i could go back in time and tell myself just don't touch it even though it's free and just get you what you you know get you something else that's going to be worth more money in the future but you never see pontiac grand prix for sale I mean, when you do, yeah, people aren't asking arms and a leg for them. 
but every you know you'll occasionally see a g-body grand prix and it's rough somebody has just stabbed a two thousand dollar crate motor in it expecting to get five or six grand for the car it's unrealistic you know this car is special to me due to the fact that i every single inch of this car is custom every nut and bolt has been replaced by me i mean every system is brand new and has been gone through except the power brakes since this had the 5.7 diesel in it back in 1981 they had to have power brakes Ooh, ooh, ooh! she just died so anyways my my brake booster is still original <laughs> Fine tuning, ladies and gentlemen. Fine tuning is what she needs. Now we're gonna put her back in her hole so I can work on it again. I just put it back on insurance. And of course, it had all those little problems. Shoot, I just shut it off and then put it out of gear. And here's the battery kill probably heard that but anyways guys that's the Grand Prix in her little hole so I do I, I do not recommend spending as much money as I did as much time as I did on a Grand Prix but it's cool nobody else in the world has what I have just you know with all this stuff done to it and you know it's mine everything's custom so that aspect's cool but it's still you know i'll take it to car shows i really will just so people can see it and it still doesn't really turn that many heads but i don't know maybe one day i'll buy a t-top regal and just swap everything to that regal i don't know I would love a T-Top Regal. If anybody's got a T-Top Regal they want to sell for cheap, let me know. But anyways, guys, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good day.